The sea, the restless and eternal sea, witness to the strange and wondrous. And here, a few miles off the coast, an exciting new underwater venture is about to begin. One of the most challenging engineering operations today is the laying of long-distance telephone cables beneath the sea. This huge complex machine, waiting to be lowered into the ocean depths, will plow a furrow across the continental shelf for the start of a new super-capacity undersea telephone cable system. Slowly, carefully, the heavy plow is lowered into the sea. A thick electric cable links the ship's control room to the sea plow. After the plow is in position, the ship will tow the 14-ton monster across the ocean floor by means of a high-strength steel cable. Watch that tension up there. You need to pay off the war now. Good. Okay, it's coming down. Coming down. Let me know when the plow hits the bottom. Getting close. Okay, tension dropping. Good okay. Yeah, right. Through attention. Oh, we're up. Good. Good. Uh, bridge the towing deck. Let me know if the control cable and tow wires all clear. Okay, bridge from lab. We're on the bottom and ready to start. Uh, get the ship underway. Only the first few miles of the long distance telephone line will be placed in the furrow created by the plow. Because the demand for worldwide communications has increased so tremendously, the Bell system is working with other communications companies and nations to lay undersea cables such as this. When this cable lies in the shallow waters of the continental shelf, it sometimes tangles with nets pulled by fishing trawlers. When this happens, cable is usually the loser. Such breaks are rare, but reliability in overseas communications is absolutely essential. A solution had to be found. So the Bell Telephone Labs went to work on a sea plow, reasoning that if the cable could be laid in a shallow trench, fishing nets would pass over it without damaging the cable. The sea plow would dig the trench, then guide the cable into it. After rugged land and water tests, the plow was finally ready for sea duty. Television cameras and hydrophones mounted on the plow give eyes and ears to the engineers aboard the cable ship John Cabot. Okay, attention building slowly. What's the control cable tension now? Okay, she's holding it at about 35,000 pounds. Okay, uh, bridge from lab, the plow is at full depth. Uh, we're ready to start burying. Roger, thank you, 23 inches. While the ship pulls the sea plow from her stern, the cable, like an endless snake, rises from the storage tanks. At the bow of the ship, it's paid out, and some 20 fathoms down, enters the mouth of the sea plow. Telephone signals racing through the cable gradually lose their strength. So every 10 miles, 500 pound electronic amplifiers called repeaters give the signals a boost. At Clark, New Jersey, 
Western Electric fabricates transistorized repeaters in specially designed dust-free rooms. Here, more than 5,000 precision electronic parts are assembled with the same meticulous care as a space satellite. For the repeater must operate in crushing pressures, thousands of feet beneath the sea for at least 20 years. Repeater over the bow shield. Uh, Roger, she's just on point seven just now. Uh, bridge the towing deck, give me the lead in the control cable, please, at all times. Guiding the repeater through the plow is a highly critical phase of the operation. Bridge from lab. Is approaching the bell mount. Will you slow to one half knot? Uh, Roger, lab, slowing down now. First marker into the bell mount. Yeah, bridge from lab. The first marker has entered the bell mount. Entering bell mount, Roger. By remote control, the plow allows the repeater to pass through the feed tube then buries it by widening the trench with an auxiliary plowshare. All right, it's coming through. Come on, let's get it good this time. Okay, it's coming out. Uh, Roger, go ahead, lab. Roger, going down. Uh, Roger, coming up in the speed. Bridge the towing deck. Watch your tension. The repeater safely through the plow, the ship continues burying the cable. Ocean currents immediately fill the trench with sand. We're now in water too deep for fishing trawlers, so the sea plow is taken aboard and the ship begins paying out cable the traditional way, over its stern. Finally, the edge of the continental shelf is reached. The cable end is securely attached to a large buoy and dropped into the sea. Another phase of the operation complete. Now the cable ship long lines takes over for the really deep sea work. The cable end is retrieved and spliced on board. Now the ship starts its laying toward the far terminus of the cable, St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. The cable's exact location on the ocean floor is extremely important. The ship must follow a carefully surveyed course. One moment, coming right to course 034. Five degrees right rudder. Steady on course 034. 034. Night and day, the most modern cable ship afloat moves steadily ahead, spinning out its cable to the ocean floor thousands of feet below. Deep in the hold, Hundreds of miles of cables slowly snake their way up from one of the three huge storage tanks. Again, the repeaters appear at 10 mile intervals. Repeater through linear cable engine. Mark. Jacksonville wants to check on 29. Tests are conducted continually through the cable between the ship and the shore. Nothing is left to chance. Okay. 54 KC, reading fine. 541 KC, okay. 29 okay, Jacksonville. I'll read you good. The laying continues for over 1,200 miles. 
until landfall is imminent. At St. Thomas, green emerald of the Caribbean, another phase of the operation is underway. Here, special steel armored cable is floated in from a ship to the beach. The other end is buoyed off in deep water. Arriving off St. Thomas, the long lines retrieves the cable and makes the final splice. On a hill overlooking the ocean, the St. Thomas Terminal. Inside, preparations get underway for the crucial tests with the other terminal at Jacksonville, Florida. Meanwhile, the Jacksonville Terminal makes its preparations. After weeks of work by hundreds of skilled people, the final test. Hello, St. Thomas. Come in, St. Thomas. Jacksonville, St. Thomas, how do you hear me? I read you fine, St. Thomas. We're in business. Results, perfect. In a world that must communicate to grow, this cable marks yet another step in meeting that need. Already, cables link Europe, South America, Asia, and Earth satellites circle the globe. Modern aviation has made travel fast, simple, and inexpensive. And today, people think nothing of hopping off to anywhere for the weekend. For vacationers as well as business, the new cable systems offer almost instantaneous ties to home and office. And the future promises even more advanced cable systems, systems which will answer the challenge for even better telephone service throughout the world, where you will be hearing more Voices from the Deep.